Greetings, this is Real Live Dragons, and I'm returning to you after a two and a week hiatus. As you can see, we've got the PlayStation 2 plugged in, and I've got a little surprise for you. Surprise, motherfuckers. This is just an experiment. Do not expect this to be an ongoing feature of future videos. This is just me messing around with my new webcam. So, uh, those of you who are pro-webcam, don't be all like, yay! And those of you who are anti-webcam, don't be all depressed and annoyed, because this, this shit ain't staying around. Well, at least probably not. <clears throat> Depends on their reaction, really. Um, so all those people out there who probably wondered what the hell I looked like. Hello. Hello, people. Weirdos. And today, I'd like to have a look at my memory cards. Welcome to my Let's Play of Memory Card Slot 1. This is part 1 of 620. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, we've got different stuff here. No, this is not really Let's Play of a memory card slot. That would be unbelievably lame and... but You know what? I, I guarantee you, if you fucking looked, up, looked it up on YouTube, someone somewhere has done a fucking video on their memory card slot. I'm not going to be doing that today, but... I, I thought it would be a good joke, but I, it just, just occurred to me some people out there might not, might have taken it seriously and actually made that shit, so. That's depressing to think about. Anyway, let me just close the door on this damn thing. Okay. Oh man, you can tell it's an older PS2 game by the blue disc. Blue PlayStation 2 discs are CD-ROMs and not DVDs. Oh yes, thank you Ava Media. Okay. Yes, this is quite an early PlayStation 2 game. This game came out for the PS2 in... 2000, I believe. It is a port of a PC game that came out the previous year. So, this game was originally released in 1999. And it's a game I have extremely fond memories of. Oh, and by the way, it's a bullfrog game. That's right, we are playing Theme Park World for the PlayStation 2. Now, the PlayStation 2 port of Theme Park World is... It's okay, it's um... It's got some, some, some pluses and some, and some negatives. Uh, I still consider the original PC version of this game to be the best as I'm sure most people do, but running the PC version of this game on anything past Windows XP is nigh on impossible. So, I am forced to resort to the lesser console versions. The um, This game also came to the PlayStation 1. Believe it or not. I believe Bullfrog handled that port themselves, and that is actually a surprisingly good version of Theme Park World. Um, yeah, that is like that is a shockingly good-looking PlayStation One game, like proving Bullfrog to be the skills developers they really were. They were able to 
wrench out every last ounce of ability out of the PlayStation 1 hardware for that version of the game. The PS2 version of the game was outsourced by EA, so... <clears throat> this version kind of lacks a soul. It's hard to explain why, it's, it's not something I can really tell you why I think it lacks a soul, but after playing many, many hours of the original PC version, and quite a few hours of the PlayStation 1 version, coming over to this game, it just... It lacks something. It lacks something. I wish I knew what. I wish I knew what. So anyway, uh, in Theme Park World, you, you have to collect golden tickets. And you use those golden tickets to unlock new um, styles of theme park. So at the start, you start off with this basic, like, prehistoric world, you know, like dinosaurs and monsters and stuff like that. That kind of theme for a theme park. And then as you unlock golden tickets, you can unlock stuff like a like a Halloween themed world and a, like a fantasy themed parks. And then you can. If you get really good, you can unlock enough gold tickets to unlock like a science fiction themed park. Oh yes. Then we have these FMV sequences that are exclusive to this version of the game. These are bizarre because it's it's They've used like much higher fidelity models for everything else in this sequence except the character model. Like the character model I believe is just ripped straight from the game. Like it's it's the same model model that they render in real time, except they've used it for this FMV sequence and it's surrounded by like much higher detail models, so it just looks bizarre. Oh yes, this is perhaps the most notorious flaw in this version of the game. The load times are unreal. And it wouldn't be such a problem if this was like the only load time. It's like, oh, when you first start the game, you have to have this one long load time. That wouldn't be a big deal. I believe this load happens every time we want to access the save menu. So every time you want to save your game, you've got to go through that. Okay, there are lots of ways to earn gold tickets. This so dude in the bottom right is the advisor. He's in, in every, every theme park, game. Three goals to uh, he was in the original theme park. There was a version of him for Theme Hospital, and, you need to and they brought him back for Theme Park World. Check the but this down. time he's like a little so little ant dude with like park. disembodied gloves little Rayman looking motherfucker. So, you can move around with the uh, D-pad or the left analog stick. You use the right stick to zoom in and out, which I believe is different to the PlayStation 1 version. In the PS1 port, you can use the right stick to uh, rotate the camera. Uh, you use the uh, L1 and R1 buttons to rotate the camera in this version. Okay, it's nice digital camera rotation. L2 brings up your messages list. So, these are your three major goals. These are the three major goals that you need to um, to do in order to, to get golden tickets. First one, you need to get 100 visitors. Goal number two, you need to make $2,000 above your starting balance. So I need to make $32,000. That's what that number in the top left needs to say. Goal three, I need to stay in business for a year. All three of those are pretty damn easy. So we can just get rid of those. R2 puts us into uh, first person mode. So not much to see right now, but once we uh, once we get our park up and running, there'll be more to see, so we'll get out of there. Where am I going? I'm going this way. So, I want to place a path. Little path here. 
sure how well you can see this, but I'm painting the ground blue. And wherever I paint the ground, a path will appear. I like making double wide paths. I don't know why, it, it doesn't really offer you any advantage in the game, but I just I just like making my paths double wide. Um, use the circle button to visit the, the laptop. That's where you can, uh, it's basically the main menu. Open or close the park, gives you your financial information. Stuff like that. Ask for a loan. Our statistics, visitor information, dominant thoughts, very useful. Change your ticket price. Stuff like that. Let's build. Uh, let's make. Hmm. King of the Swingers. Crazy ape. I believe there are some uh, version unique rides in this. So I believe King of the Swingers here is uh, exclusive to the PS2 version of the game. And that's a pretty good ride to start up with. You, it's uh, it's the, one of the cheapest rides to buy. Um, it's got decent amount of excitement and really good reliability, so... Let's go with that. Okay... Circle button to rotate. Um, let's do this. first ride. Let us add some shops. Burger shop. Oh, okay, yes, okay, this is a problem with this version of the game. It will not merge paths with attractions that you build. So you have to delete a section of path. If you want it to... Um, to be flush with the main path, you have to delete a section of path and then build it. So it will refuse to build the um, the shop or the ride or the, the sideshow flush with the path if there's already a path there and it's just annoying. It's one of those minor minor problems. But it's not a huge deal at this one. If I try and place this, it won't because there's a path there. I do not believe this is a problem in the uh, original PC version. I think the PC version they straight up just let you. Path. Delete that. Then go to shops. Then select your thing. We've got a burger shop, we've got a drink shop. Let us buy a litter bin. Put that between the shops. Um, sideshows, arcade, jungle spray, we only have two at the moment. We have the opportunity to research and build new ones later on, but at the start we only have two, so let's go with an arcade. Yep, this has the exact same problem. God damn it. There we go. Uh, this game was released in the States as Sim Theme Park, I believe. Which is funny to me because Maxis didn't touch this at all. This is not a Maxis game. Calling it Sim Theme Park was purely a uh, knock, knock. People want to get a in. market get response. Do you think you should open the park? We're being prompted to open our park. Um, let's do that. Okay, our statistics. Information. No, back. Options. 
Oh, down here. It's right there in front of me. Because it turns out this, the uh, the Sims games that uh, Maxis makes, or made rather, Maxis is no longer around, are far more popular in the States than Bullfrog games ever were, so... EA making a decision that would probably make made them more money in the long run um, decided to rename this game to Sim Theme Park in order to trick people into thinking it was something it wasn't. Which is dirty. Put the staff room there. Speaking of staff, uh, we need to hire some. Let's hire a cleaner. You can see here which it costs. The first guy is actually pretty good. Leon is pay grade one, monthly wage, and he's got good motivation. So hire this dude. And we want a Panic on standby. Motivation uh, is how fast they walk. So, plant that guy there. And we want an entertainer. Steve! Steve is a dinosaur man. Hover over a ride and press the circle button. You can give us some information on the ride, so. It's a state of repair. I don't know what light means. What does light mean? Weird. You can change its speed, its capacity, the duration of the ride. However, doing so will affect its reliability rating. Which will. Uh, means its state of repair will decrease much more rapidly. Let's increase the capacity a little bit. More people can get on the ride that way. And... I just realised we haven't built any toilets. That's maybe not a good idea. We want toilets. <sighs> Ava Media, ladies and gentlemen. Quality products. Bollocks. You have to rotate every individual one. I forgot about that. So now we have some toilets. We head south. See the buses arriving and leaving. Here we go. Let's go first person. And uh, in first person mode, you can do more than just walk around, I believe. So if I was to walk up to this ride here, push past these little kids go straight in. Yep. I'm now on the ride. And holy shit, I'm amazed no one vomits on that thing. You can do that with, I believe, almost every ride in the game. I want to say there are some where you cannot. in and ticket price is too cheap. Yes, this is a thing that comes up regularly. So, park statistics, I believe. No. Finance, no. Ticket price, it's in visitor information, believe it or not. 
I wouldn't consider that a logical place to put that option, but sure. A couple of people really like the park, a couple of people really don't like the park, and the overwhelming majority are meh. It's fine by me. Let's add some more features. What are we going to add? Let's add another litter bin. Add that guy there. Let's add another sh uh, shop. Fry shop. Oh, wait. Hang on. Now we can add the fries shop. There we go. Hmm. Rocky Racers. Let's add another ride. First of all, let's extend the path a bit. There we go. Let's put this dude. God. Lots of your visitors are thirsty. Maybe you should build some. Um, this this whole path thing is really bumming me out. Kind of makes me wonder why the game shipped like this. The PC version didn't have this problem. There we go. And I just got a golden ticket. Way to go! Since you've got a handle on the fundamentals and have this part up and running, I'd like to give you a gold ticket as a reward. Thank you, friendly Scottish Ant Man. So, this is telling me I need to research more shops before I can build any more. Uh, thirsty, build more drink shops, will do. I want a gold ticket, I beat the tutorial. There's a litter bug running amok in the park. You should get a cleaner on the case and clean up the mess. Will do. Let me first... Place a drinks shop. Okay. You spend a lot of time in this menu. Um, it's a bit crazy. No, 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 cancel, delete, let's just extend the path up here a bit, first let's get some cash before we really build anything more, uh, pranksters littering the park, and some visitors believe the ticket price is too cheap. Really? Well, let me get on that. We're up to 30 this time. It does stay there, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And this is pretty much the game. Um, there's a lot of sitting and waiting, I find, with this game. You can adjust the, uh, the options for your sideshow, so you can have like, the chance of winning. cost of the prize and the price of the game. Let's increase the price of the game to 15. Yeah, 
that sounds good. You want that $30 prize, you've got to pay 15 for a 50-50 chance, more or less. That sounds fair. Same with the drinks, we can um, adjust the quality of the product. You can see the cost of the goods changes depending on the quality and the amount of ice. This drink is just 100% ice. Nah, we won't do that. We'll make it 50% ice. I wonder, do you have to do that with every individual one? You do have to do it with every individual one. Wow, that sucks. There we go. There we go. How much salt? Increasing the amount of salt in the fries increases demand for drinks. That is how you do business. Burgers. How much the quality of the meat? How much fat do we include? Quite a bit. Now we just need more people. See how clean our toilets are. How wonderful. Visitor information. Dominant thoughts. Toilet, happiness, and burgers. Well, we've got toilets and we have burgers. Well, maybe we need more burgers. Does, does the burger icon represent all food or just burgers? I have no idea. Let's build another sideshow. Jungle spray. Oh, wait. Hold on. Okay, now let's build the sideshow. Joker is littering around your park. See if you can get a cleaner over there to clean up his mess. That is one of another flaw in this game. The uh, the advisor dude pops up way too often. I think every single time somebody drops a bit of litter, he always has to tell you every single time. And when the park gets really big, he's constantly doing it, and it drives you insane. Your visitors are hungry. Maybe you should build some food shops before they start... I mean, leave. You know, telling me every single time somebody drops a single piece of litter, that's not useful information, okay? People are going to do that. If there is a certain amount of litter on the ground, yes, then maybe turn that into a notification. But don't just, like, tell me every single time some asshole kid drops a sweet wrapper, you know? But the PC version also had that problem. Boost the ticket price. I believe we can... This is one we can play, isn't it? Nope. No, not this one. Some of the sideshows you can play, I believe. I believe you can. I don't know for sure. Anyway, let us build some more food shops. Let's see. 
Let's go. Oh, okay. Whoops, almost did something really bad there. Um, let us build another fries shop. Plug that in there. Let us reduce the quality of the goods and increase the salt. Yes. That's what we like. Nice work. You've discovered a hidden award. For having seen to it that enough of your shops have litter bins to keep the park tidy, please accept the green award and a gold ticket as a token of my esteem. Thank you. That's right. There are hidden, uh, hidden gold tickets in the game. Yep. More people are showing up. That's more money for me. Visitors say they are starving. That may be a little dramatic, but you should consider adding some food shops. I bet the um, the notifications for the hunger or thirst of the visitors is just as bad as the litter dropping notifications. I bet the game just literally just throws up a red flag every single time a single visitor decides they are hungry. Which again is an insane way of handling it. Like, wait until a certain percentage of the visitors are hungry, then issue the notification. Don't just... Congratulations! Because you attracted enough visitors to reach your goal, you get a gold ticket! I have another gold ticket. I have completed one of my major goals. So, 100 visitors in the park. All I need now is to stay in business for a year and make more, make $2,000 more money than what I started with. Ticket price is too cheap. Well, let me get on that. Uh, the ticket price is probably the main way. Once your ticket price really starts to climb, like up towards like the hundreds, that really becomes like your main income. You just start making so much money every time you get new visitors. Uh, it, 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 you, you start to rely on it more and more. Again, the ride about to break down messages aren't necessary, especially when they send you another message telling you a ride has broken down. Let's build another ride. Crazy Ape. Crazy Ape, I believe, is the ride most people would start with in the uh, original PC version of the game. This is like the cheapest ride. Some little horror has put in the original version. In your park. Oh, you should get it cleaned up before people get sick. Honestly, it's worse than the entertainers. Go. Now, let us add some extra stuff. Let's add another litter bin. And let us add some security cameras. Yeah, let's spy on people. One security camera. Two security camera. Three security cameras. Because eventually, not yet, but eventually we start getting troublemakers and then we'll have to hire security guards to take care of that for us. But I 
that doesn't start becoming a problem until you start getting into like the 200, 300, like, um, park capacity. Some joker is littering around your park. Speak of the devil, we have, we have, uh, troublemakers, stink bombs. That's a job for security. Security personnel will eject visitors that uh, leave stink bombs. So maybe that's a sign for us to start hiring some. Matt, we've got Ian, we've got Richard, Brett. Or Martin. Martin's a good choice. Only a hundred a month, and he's got good motivation. Alright, Martin. You got the job. Don't let me down. In the PC version, you could change the name of the park itself. I'm not sure if you can do that in this version. I don't think you can, no. Hmm. No, no, you can't change the name of your park in this version of the game. That's a shame. What messages have I got? Interestingly, some visitors believe your ticket price is too cheap. Well, do they now? And they want more toilets. Nicely done. You've stayed in business long enough to reach your goal. You I've been in business for a ticket. year. Great. Two of my three major goals have been complete. All I need to do now is make money. Uh, first things first. Ticket price. Sixty dollars. Sixty bucks to get into my piece of shit park with only three rides. Value for money, that is. Cheers. More toilets. So yeah, I used to play this game a lot when I was little. I used to have access to the PC version. I would spend hours and hours and hours playing this. Which, in hindsight, I mean, this game has not aged very well. I mean, and it certainly isn't as, say, like, complicated as, like, a, um, like a Roller Coaster Tycoon. Roller Coaster Tycoon is still the gold standard for this kind of game, but I really liked it. And also, I was a fucking shameless Bullfrog fanboy. I would play anything they put out. Theme park, theme hospital, dungeon keeper, magic carpet for fuck's sake. Like, magic carpet was one of those games where you either weigh into it or you hated it. My opinion on magic carpet has cooled quite a bit over the last few years, but I remember quite liking that game. Maybe I should hire another cleaner. People are getting hungry, and there aren't enough food shops. Do you think you should build There aren't any food shops, he says. I have four of them. Yeah, the uh, the advisor starts getting kind of annoying after a while. Now we have two cleaners. Ticket price is too cheap. Well, we know what that means. Let's try 75. Let's try our luck. Hang on. Should I have backed out of that or should it? Oh no, it does stay. Okay, good. Another major difference between uh, this version of the game and all the other versions are 
In the PlayStation 2 version, all of the, uh, the staff and the visitors are polygonal. They're like little, little polygon people. Whereas in the PlayStation 1 and PC versions, um, they're sprites. Little 2D sprites walking around. There's PS2 a version, a mark in the park. little, the case, little clean up the mess. low poly children running around. It's unique to this version of the game. Hmm. Capture card. Don't crap on crap out on me now. All available features have been built. We might need to start thinking about hiring a researcher. As you see, we go back here, there's a research option, but we can't select it, it's greyed out. So we need to hire a researcher. Researchers are the most expensive um, staff members in the game. So make sure you get a good one. But Jarl, Mark, Morton, Paul, Simon. Mm, Jarl seems like the best. Best value for money. He'll just walk around the park making notes. Looking at things and coming up with ideas. Eventually, he will give us Some new stuff, but we have to tell him what we want, so we have to tell him, hey, could you research a upgrade for King of the Swingers? And what that upgrade will do is it'll, uh, it'll increase the ride's tolerance for, um, for its reliability on like speed and capacity, so we can increase the speed and capacity and duration of the ride, and it'll have less of an effect on the reliability and the state of repair, so the ride will last longer between repairs. And the ride will be more exciting in general. Visitors are always looking for the next big thing, and, well, you haven't researched any ride upgrades. Maybe you should. <sighs> always late to the party as normal, aren't you? Aren't you, advisor? Really? What's that? It's about time I researched something. Gee, thanks for telling me, advisor. Man, without your advice, I would really be stuck. Yeah, the advisor is... Probably the single most annoying thing about this game. Ticket price is too cheap. We're in the money. We're in the money. Yeah. Okay, let's go up to 90. Let's really push our luck. else we can build. Um, we've built all the rides available right now. We have no track rides available to us. We do have a roller coaster, but it's very expensive. Let's wait a little while before we build that. Let's build up some cash reserves first. We have quite a few shops. Both of our sideshows and no more features. Yeah, at this point in the game, we really need to start worrying about um, research. I'll tell you what, 
since this is a, um, a pre-recorded video, there's no reason why I can't just edit out the wait, right? Alright, I'll come back later when there's actually some more interesting stuff to do. See if you can get a See in a bit. Over there to clean up his mess. Okay, welcome back. There has been some developments. I have uh, researched and fully upgraded these two rides, and I have the final upgrade ready for uh, the Crazy Ape. So when you upgrade a ride, you have to uh, go to its um, information page. Select the upgrades option. And then you press, you select and press the X button to perform the upgrade. And then, after a little while, the mechanic dude down here will start making his way over to the right. So. You go over there, yes, and you go over there. What is this, a union job? What? You mechanics could do a better job if you set their patrol areas. There you go. And now, Crazy Ape has much better reliability. Lots of your visitors are thirsty. Maybe you should build some drink shops. And increase the speed a bit. There we go, more speed. We can do the same with the King of the Swingers are getting hungry, and there aren't enough food shops. Do you think you should build minimum cost to our reliability meter? That's the main reason why you want the upgrades, because they allow you to push your rides to the limit. Get people more excited about them. As you can see, we've got a new ride and a new shop being researched. And, um... Let's research and... There are no, up no, no more upgrades to research at the moment. Feature. Let us... Research a medium bush. It's the best use of our scientists at the moment. You, scientist, research me a medium-sized bush. Do that for me. So, it's been a while and we can now build some extra stuff. So let's build... Let's build a costume shop. Yeah. That's a good one. Where should we put that guy? Let's put that there. expand this way. Make that path. Okay, let's get some expansions going. People will go into the new costume shop. Let us build a new sideshow. Gopher Bash or Dino Racing. Let's say Gopher Bash. Oh, wait. Let's try building that again. So now we have a new sideshow there. I believe this is one of the sideshows we can actually play ourselves. Yes. Yes, I would like to play this. It's better to use the D-pad for this. I believe if you get the high score in this game, it wins you a golden ticket.
Hmm. Yeah, we'll play again. There is a gold ticket to win here, but I'm not sure what the score requirement for it is. Yep, there we go. 20. There we go. Ticket price is too cheap. Researched a new feature. New shop has been researched. So. Some of your visitors are hungry. Maybe you should build some food shops before they start. 100 bucks. There we go. It's now a hundred bucks to get into my theme park that only has three rides. Let us gift shop. Let's us remedy the issue of not enough food shops. Why, why is the, oh god, why is the, uh oh. Uh oh. Edit the queue. There we go, fix the queue. Yeah, let's add some more food shops. Can we fit dino racing in here? We can, but we need to get rid of a uh, piece of path first. There we go. Let's add some more features. We've got a leafy bush, a stone statue, undergrowth sound effects, Bin. Let's add our prized medium bush. Look at that medium bush, it's so bushy. Okay. I believe I think our researcher has run out of research. Oh no. Research a mammoth fountain for me and research. Oh. No more sideshows. Research a restaurant for me. There we go. Let's bring. the upper path down to meet the lower path. Let's just add an ice cream shop. So I need to remove that. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream.
New ride. Ooh. Let's build a new ride. Got the Tom Tom Twister. Or the, the Manic Mayan. Manic Mayan appears very similar in concept to the uh, the Crazy Ape. Let's go for the Tom Tom Twister. Four grand. Hmm. Okay. So now we have a new ride. Let us build some more shops. Got the restaurant. Um, let's build a gift shop. We haven't built the gift shop yet. Cheap. New shop. Now we can edit the information on this shop. Hmm. Quality of the goods. Let's knock that down a bit. Make sure we get some cash out of this place. And also. Where's that restaurant? There's the restaurant. Okay. Want to delete that piece of path. There you are. Boom. Let's not forget to put the bin there. Stonehead. Stonehead. That's a good place for a stone head. A small rock, man. Visitors say they are starving. That may be a little dramatic, but you should consider adding some food shops. People are starving, apparently. But first of all, let us raise our ticket price again. And build another ride. A minute mine. Feature we can put here. Undergrowth sound effects. Doing good. I think this right, this uh, sideshow is another one that we can engage in. This one's different though. This one is uh, betting. Yeah, you're placing bets. Once one one. Two to one. 
3 to 1, 4 to 1, 5 to 1, 1 to 1. Odds 1 to 1, clearly this is the one we want to go with. Always keep playing this till he wins. And when we win a uh, race, we get a um, we get a golden ticket. God damn it! Try again. Try blue, all in on blue. Come on, blue. Blue is in last place. God damn it. Try pink. Come on, pink. Oh dear. We'll come back to that later. But yeah, if you win a, uh, a race on that thing, you um, you get a golden ticket. We adjusted the stats of the restaurant yet. No, we haven't. There we go. Ticket prices are cheap. Other stuff going on here. Restaurant done. Restaurant, gift shop, fire shop, costume shop. Do we make a costume shop? Yes, we have a costume shop. We have a restaurant. We have a gift shop. And no balloon shop though. We haven't placed a balloon shop. We should do that now. Balloons are big business. Place that there. Some little terrorist has set off a stink bomb in your park. You better get it cleaned up before people get sick and you really have something to clean up. Wow, yeah, you can tell this game came out before 2001. That guy just referred to a child as a terrorist. Huh. Add some more features. Medium size. Okay, different stone head. There we go. Look at that stone head. Uh, a large tree. Why not? to place this large tree. Let's place it here, next to the Manic Mine. Research... Research me a super toilet. Research me... Oh, no sideshows left. No shops left. 
Research me a sun god. Take up a lot of space. I'm not sure if I actually want to place one of these things. Hmm. I think to get the most out of them, you have to place them next to the path. Your mechanics might get more work done if you set the patrol areas. There's a litter bug running amok in the park. You should get a cleaner on the case and clean up the mess. Hmm. Hmm. What else? Place it back here. No one's coming back here. Look at that. Bit of background featuring. Let's add some small stuff here. Create some more toilets. Go, okay, three more toilets. Might have to hire some more dudes. That one dude we've got is a bit overwhelmed. New ride upgrade. That is for this guy? Nope. It must be for this guy. Yep, yeah, there it is. Thousand dollars. Thousand bucks for a level one upgrade. Wow. Get him working on another upgrade. Oh, 
Statistics, Visitor Information, 135. 135 sounds good right now. Some joker is littering around your park. Yeah. See if you can get a cleaner over there to clean up his mess. See if we can try and get one more golden ticket. Some more security cameras out there. That's right, because there's nothing we British love doing more than spying on people with security cameras. We have the highest number of security cameras per person in the whole world by a large margin. Last time I checked, last time I found out. So let's not uh, break that stereotype just yet. Let's add us. Another small rock. Why not? Look at that small rock. Let's go for a stroll. Yep. Steering the first person mode is a bit uh, awkward in this, as um, you have to you, uh, there are no strafing, it's, it's, you're only using the left analog stick. You move forward and backwards by pressing up and down on the analog stick and then you turn left and right uh, using the same analog stick, so it's kinda awkward. Reminds me of playing first person shooters on the Dreamcast. And If you didn't have mouse and keyboard for your Dreamcast and or your game, your first person shooter game didn't support the mouse and keyboard, then you were up shit creek on that thing because the Dreamcast controller was fucking terrible for first person shooters. You haven't you don't know suffering until you've tried playing Soldier of Fortune with a Dreamcast controller. There's a reason why the second analog sticks became a thing. I remember the days before analog sticks. A litter bug running a mock in the park. When a single analog stick was considered a, a, a novelty. Man. How we've how we've evolved. Feature. Ticket price is too cheap. Thanks for the park. People are thirsty and they can't find any. That's our super toilet. Yes. Drink shops. Gaze upon its mightiness. Behold my super toilet. upon its majesty is the toilet of the future. More drinks shops. Sure thing, me bucko. Getting hungry, and there aren't enough food shops. Do you think you should build some more? Boom. Leafy bush. Check out my leafy bush.
New guard upgrade. Let us check that out. I believe that is for this guy over here. Yes. Research. Oh, that sun god is nearing completion. No shops left. Sideshows left. Round fountain. $150. Remember, we started this game with, what, $10 entrance fee? Now it's gone up 150%. Damn. No, it's gone up 1,500% actually. Christ. That new feature has been researched already. Let's just build it then. Round fountain. Look at that. How wonderful that is. And on the seventh day, I gazed upon my work, and it was good. Got all this extra space out here that we're not utilising. Let's do something about that. Ooh. Just in time, because we've got a new ride. Some joker is littering around your park. See if you can get a cleaner over there to clean up Sun the God. mess. 2,500. Decent amount of space there. Some undergrowth noises. And a little bit. Cause some of your visitors are hungry. Maybe we are going to put before they start a drink shop there. There we go. Your stock of shops is getting low. It might be good to get rid of some of the older ones in the park. Oh, that's right. In this, uh... In the console version, you can only have so much of each thing because it's a console, right? And you can't have... you just can't keep adding stuff to it. Eventually, you're going to reach that hardware limit. So, you notice... Next to each category, you've got a stock. And that stock lets you know this is how many of each thing you can build. I can only build five more features before the RAM, um, the amount of RAM that's been allocated to that to that has been used up. I can only build five more shops before that uses up all its allocated RAM. I think what we'll do now, we'll just, instead of building more stuff, we'll just sit back and wait for the uh, money to accumulate. Hmm. 
It's not the best thing to do. Reach 32,000 and we'll get our, uh, our sixth golden ticket. Upgrade. Almost there now, just 2,000 more. <laughs> 1,000 more. We achieved all three major goals for this part. And then that will probably have to be it for now. I'm sure you're not very interested in watching any more of this. This is definitely a game that's more interesting to play than to watch. I can understand that. We can very quickly have a sneak peek at one of the other themes. That's it, isn't it? That's 32 grand. That's my last major gold ticket. Nice work. You made a tidy profit in the there last we go. twelve months. Enough to meet your goal. The gold ticket is yours. There we go. Now we have six gold tickets. Sick. Let's save the game. Oh wait. Let's call our save game. Fits perfectly. Oh, that's right, yes. Every time we save the game, we have to endure the load time again. I have no idea why. To be honest, this just like discourages people from saving the game. If you have to go through this every single time. Oh yes, and that's the great thing. It also removes all the people from your park every time you reload the game. Maybe you should I forgot about that one. Right. Let us some of your visitors are hungry. Quit the current game. That should take us off, oh, for God's sake. Wait, do we need a... How do I access the park menu? Okay. Okay, so that's not it. Okay, 
need to get back to my park. But the only way to do that is to open a park and then immediately quit out. This is why, this, I remember now, this is why I don't like the PS2 version. <sighs> okay, so laptop. Okay, there are lots of ways to earn gold tickets. Some uh, of which are game hidden, options, but in every quick current game. Load game. Oh, I have two. Um, I'd forgotten I've had a uh, previous save file for this. Is this really the only way to change to a different park? So I've still got two more gold tickets I could earn from that park. Hmm. One gold ticket. Okay. So that's the fantasy themed uh, theme park. That's the Halloween themed theme park. And that's the uh, second dinosaur themed theme park. Let's go to the, the uh, Halloween one. The Halloween one's definitely the more interesting. Skip that. And then we will... Oh, we've got a different loading screen. Nice. And then we will definitely have to stop this video because it's gone on for long enough, I think. Just watch this little pumpkin man dance. Halloween world. And as you can see from the rides, they're all Halloween themed. So you've got bat and a burger, you've got green and purple ice cream, pumpkin drinks. Stuff like that. Pretty much the same thing. It's just got a different skin. A different aesthetic treatment. Devil Bash looks a hell of a lot like Gopher Bash. Not gonna lie. Tiny Rock. It's a bin. Small bush. The toilets are now coffin shapes. Joy. Stuff like that. I think the uh, the Halloween themed parks uh, aesthetic is my personal favourite for this game. It's also got the best background music as well. So anyway, that'll have to do for today. I'm sure, people are sick of watching this game. Thank you for um, joining me for what the uh, hour and change. This video is on its final length, I, I suspect. Depends how much editing I do. Um, yeah. This has been Theme Park World for the play PlayStation 2. You can't see that very well because the camera is reversed. So it's currently appearing backwards in the camera, so... That's dumb. Yeah, thanks again.
And uh, sorry about this dumb face cam thing. This probably won't show up ever again. Right. See you next time.